Well, hello everyone. I was very fortunate to get the chance to see an early screening of The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, directed by Tom Gormican and starring Nicolas Cage and Pedro Pascal. If I'm not mistaken, I believe this is the first early screening I've been to in a theater in the age of COVID. The last early screening I attended in a theater was Bloodshot, and God, that was... Would have been a little over two years ago, I think. Suffice to say, this was a little bit better. Cage in this movie plays himself, or a fictional version of himself at least, and he has been doing a string of lesser-known low-budget movies, and they do not give him the same star power that his old blockbusters used to, and also don't bring in as much money. And he's trying very hard to get that next big role that will put Nick Cage back on the map. But it turns out that's easier said than done. And his constant focus on his film career means he has not been paying nearly enough attention to his family, as evidenced by his troubled relationship with his now ex-wife and their daughter. But then one day his agent, played by Neil Patrick Harris, brings him a mysterious offer. A Spanish billionaire and Nick Cage superfan, Javi Gutierrez, played by Pedro Pascal, will give him $1 million if he will agree to appear at Javi's birthday party. Cage, of course, hates the idea, but agrees to do it because it's not like he has anything else going on right now, and what the hell, he needs the money. Unfortunately, this simple appearance at a birthday party goes awry when Cage finds himself getting caught up in an international incident involving an illicit arms dealer and a kidnapped politician's daughter. And then it gets weird. This movie was everything I hoped it would be. I really got a kick out of this. I love it when celebrities are willing to play these self-deprecating versions of themselves, and this version of Nick Cage is a lot of fun. He's a bit full of himself and very much stuck in the past, and for the record, Cage says the version of himself in this movie does not bear any resemblance to how it is in real life, and for what it's worth, I believe him, but it is still very funny. And Cage gets to play multiple versions of himself in this movie. Another version is his... I don't know if conscience is the right word. It's probably more devil than angel. In any case, this imaginary Nick Cage is a 30 years younger version of him with no restraint whatsoever and probably enough cocaine running through his system to kill a grizzly. They did use a de-aging effect on his face, and it did not look great. He did look a bit waxy, but that's really the only complaint I have about this character. Otherwise, he was hilarious. And if the movie was only that version of Nick Cage, I imagine it would get old pretty quick, but they use just the right amount, and it never wears out as welcome. And while this movie is, at least in part, kind of poking fun at Nick Cage and roasting him a bit, it's also very much a loving tribute to him and his movies, and to a lesser extent, movies in general. There is a great bit in this movie about Paddington 2, and I'm not going to give it away, but I will say it was awesome. And Paddington 2 is awesome. If you haven't seen it, you really should. Pascal is, unsurprisingly, very good as Javi, who one might say has an unhealthy obsession with Nick Cage, and it's something that could very easily veer into creepy territory, but they manage to walk that line so it stays funny. And I loved watching the friendship that develops between Nick and Javi. It was completely ridiculous, but it was also really charming. Like, these two are really good together. Speaking of ridiculous, the plot for this movie is nuts. And really, that's nothing new for Nick Cage, if you know anything about his filmography. And indeed, I think that's the point. Basically, there are a couple of CIA agents, played by Tiffany Haddish and Ike Barinholtz, and they suspect Javi might be an arms dealer who has kidnapped some politician's daughter. And since Cage is now the guy's new BFF and has pretty much unlimited access to him, they recruit him to spy on Javi which goes about as well as you would expect. And I do appreciate that they were able to use such a ridiculous premise without necessarily making Haddish and Baron Holtz look stupid. Cage handles the looking stupid part. And brilliantly, I might add. Overall, it's very funny, it has charm to spare, and they even throw in a pretty cool action sequence toward the end. I had a lot of fun with this. I definitely would recommend this if you're a Nick Cage fan. Even if you're not, I think there's still enough here for you that you're going to get a kick out of it. There are a few references to his filmography that you might not get, but it's still funny. And that's all I have to say about the unbearable weight of massive talent. Till next time, take care.